everyone, and welcome to this webcast for the OSLC community. Today we have Peter or Pete Steinfeld and Robert Myers, or Bob Myers, from IBM Rational talking about their experience building a high availability production system that uses OSLC to integrate all the different components. Pete, Bob, thanks so much for doing this. And Bob, I will turn over presenter to you now. Okay. Go ahead. I'm going to share. Um, so, uh, Sean, I think what I've done is I've shared on my screen. Is that okay, rather than run? Yep, that's fine. Okay. All right. Hi. As you've seen, the title of this is Any Record, Any Place, Any Time. came out of a collaborative effort we had once in a team, and uh, we decided there was quite a bit of scope to what we were about to do. Please read the um, autobiographies about Pete and myself. We have interesting uh, hobbies. And so I'm going to cover a number of topics. This really presentation is going to come in two phases. One is that we're going to do the design um, presentation of applications using OSLC. And then Pete's going to talk about the um, implementation of it and uh, do some demoing. So there may be times where uh, I may say, well, why don't we wait for the demo or see something in the demo and we'll do it that way. I uh, borrowed some slides from Steve Spiker's presentation, and um, and so I'm going to talk to those uh, first. I believe that most of the people on the call have knowledge of OSLC, but I just wanted to state a few things so that we all were working from the same sort of uh, page on this thing. Uh, the inspiration um, for the OSLC architecture was the Internet. As we know, it's amazingly scalable. Um, it integrates information on a massive scale. So far, we haven't reached the end of the Internet. It really uh, promotes collaboration, which I find to be particularly helpful in being productive. It's open, and we have the ability to see things anywhere. So. This was a great start for this particular architecture. With traditional tool integration, which I'm sure we all have done, um, there are n squared possible point-to-point -point connections. Um, we have to deal with closed APIs, things that may change from time to time, lock us into vendors. We have tight coupling, where we can produce extraordinarily uh, beautiful structures, but uh, structures that are uh, very difficult to change and to adopt. And we don't have to do lockstep upgrades um, in OSLC like we often do in traditional tool integration. So here's a couple lists that Steve put together on the, on the left and, and the right. Um, you know, I mentioned the brittle integrations. Uh, monolithic repository is often a central point. Uh, boil the ocean uh, type of approach to things. And what I found interesting in looking at these slides maybe a year after they were first presented is that uh, Steve really foresaw a lot of the things that um, have proven to be true. And on the OSLC approach on the right, you see a lot of these things there, and I'm going to go into detail about them a bit. Um, that really uh, that really back up what Steve foresaw for this. Now this is a bit oversimplified, but it, it kind of is actually not that far off the mark. Start in the upper left hand corner, you identify applications that you need, then you write or adopt them, 
and uh, based on OSLC enabled products. Okay, so you you adopt the ones that are developed using OSLC enabled products, or you develop them yourself. You configure OSLC friendships between the applications, and then you call it a system. That does sound a little bit, you know, out there on the limb, but it's not really all that far out. Um, one of the nice pieces about it is that there's no need to have a comprehensive data model with standardized field and record semantics. Um, you don't need an IT admin professional to comprehend the whole application from a coding, record layout, field naming, standardization. I'm sure more than one of us has written 100-page white papers in the past trying to design systems like this. And we've done it, but it's been a big thing. Instead, the design solution is by people that know the business. And they do it at the business component process level using OSLC-enabled applications. And that's a very important step in uh, developing systems. I believe this is really modular or component-based development. You can adopt parts of a system rather than say either you adopt everything or nothing. So you can stage the implementation of things because it's component-based. When you make a change, somebody says, oh, we need to have this field. The IT person doesn't have to go back into their head and look at their giant schematics to cover the great whiteboards and the walls and say, well, we can fit that element in here, but it's going to have four different impacts in these various places. When you do maintenance, you do maintenance to one of the modular components, one of the modular pieces. And so it frees you up a lot to be able to keep up with changes that go on in your business. Even though you have that, access is controlled at the application level. So even though you have these different systems, you, you can control it at each application level. And you can implement single sign-on technology using WebSphere or other technologies um, that makes the connects invisible, and here's a key point, to permitted users. So if you don't have the privileges to get into one of the aspects of the system, you're going to be presented with a form dialogue asking you for your user ID and password. If you are, you're just going to see the next record you're looking at, no matter what application it's in. Also, you don't have to say, okay, we're going to do everything we do going forward in one tool, because that's the best tool that we've ever seen, and we want it to be used for everything. Sometimes there are tools that are better suited or more accepted than even the best tool that you have at your fingertips. And so OSLC enables that. It scales easier because it's Internet design. Basically, you're linking to any place that you can get to, no matter where the data is. One of the other things is, is that sometimes you have new systems that come online that you want to use. And so you can add a new system without saying, now let me see, how am I going to fit this whole system into these other four or five components so that they all work together and they all trade off the data together? You don't have to be concerned about that. You have to have some sort of a process and figure out how that's going to work in. You have to have some sort of training that tells people that you go over here to do this new functionality now, but you don't have to redesign, redevelop the system in your head. And it promotes independent parallel development. In our case, each application of the, I think it's five that we have, each application had been vetted in production independently for more than a year by literally hundreds of engineers working 24 by 7 around the world. So when we deployed, we deployed known entities. And the only piece that we had that we had to work on connecting was OSLC friendships 
and linking up. The data warehouse is an important piece in an OSLC linked system as I see it. It allows us to make linked records look like one extended record for application reporting. So as Pete will show you later, if I have some records in one database linked to records in another database, when I do the data warehouse extract, transform, and load, what we call ETL, into the data warehouse, we're going to be able to see that the two records and the fields in the two records are available to do reporting on. And um, records in any OSLC-enabled application can be linked. And so that's a large part of, of how we uh, define the uh, process between uh, various stages in the, uh, in the system. Sean pointed out when he talked to me about a week or so ago that there's probably some real implications here in terms of IBM analytics and other tools, other analytics tools that can be used to uh, determine um, uh, information about your whole operating environment. And that's one of the things the data warehouse also provides. And then the last piece of this is that we realize that with people being used to string search capabilities, if we indexed the data warehouse, we could provide a faceted string-based search capability on the data. So we have technology at IBM called OmniFind, but it could be any kind of uh, text search capability. And by indexing that, we give our users the ability to self-serve on some of the requests that they have. So here's just a high-level look at what Pete's going to describe in more detail, but we have a client request system where the client calls in, and we may have to enter a client visible bug. And at some point, we may need to have some collaborative discussion between our tech support engineers and uh, developers to find out, you know, is it bigger than a bread box? Is it really a problem? Is it really a feature? feature, so we have an escalation. And then a developer has to take over responsibility for developing a solution. And they do that on their own area, in their own database, using their own process. All of these things can be linked up to each other. Pete's going to show that. And tech support has a process for dealing with the customer, dealing with the problem, dealing with the development team to get the solutions that they think are necessary. And occasionally, we have things that go into being critical situations, which have to be handled by immediate fixes or something like that. So this is just an overall picture of all these different systems, um, and, and yet they all can be connected. One of the things that i found is that when you have different systems, you might have a different look and feel to each of the areas. And the OSLC UI preview is proven to be uh, something that really reduces the differences because the data from the other application, when you have a linked record and you put your cursor over top of it, it'll pop right up in front of you. And when you do have that, it renders it in the context of the record where you're working right now. And um, this, this makes it to look much more like a system that's all one system, even though each area has been developed independently and just linked. And one of the nice surprising things that came out of the system that we did for our organization was that because we have this security that I referred to earlier in each of the applications, we're now in conversations with many other brands and divisions within our organization that are interested in exactly this system. But some of them 
are really determined to build their own variants of it. And one of the nice things about OSLC is that that's okay too. Because even though a system is different in one brand or division from another, if we make OSLC friends between, say, the escalation databases in the two different systems, well, then one organization whose software goes together with software from another organization can communicate with both our developers and our tech support engineers and um, and maybe eventually find that the problem is either on one side or the other or maybe in both. So that's one of the nice surprising things is that we don't have to go out there with one size fits all. Even though we do like standardization, it helps to have the conversations. But we don't have to do that, and we, we won't lose the ability to communicate if we do that. So OSLC has been defined so that it is uh, welcoming to people to adopt. What we have done is we've found a few things that we think are what we call just enough standardization. And you can see the list down here below. One of the things we, we ask for the various tools that we use, because we use a variety of, of I, uh, our tools in, in the system, is that they be enabled so that you can link or make friends with other of the OSLC native applications in our system. And that you can link when creating or selecting already existent records from each of the OSLC friends. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the ability to hover with a UI preview has proven to be um, very, very important um, in, the, in the process of building these systems. And then the other thing that we ask is support for the OSLC API. And we're really moving into this. We haven't really developed this too thoroughly yet, but we're looking forward to it this year. But it supported sufficiently to enable pulling OSLC linking from the OSLC enabled application repository into a data warehouse. We're about to implement that, and um, we know that that works. But also, we're looking to get what we call prefill data. And one of the important things is, is that we differentiate between sync replication and linking systems. And one of the things you think about is this. Let's say that we use prefill data from one abstract or headline record and pulled it into another abstract line or, or record. We could end up in a situation where the abstract in the first one says, this is a big problem. Okay, And we pull it into another system, and it makes the abstract or headline on that system say, this is a big problem. But then at some point, somebody says, oh, my goodness, I made a mistake. I didn't mean this is a big problem. I meant this is not a big problem. Well, at that point, if we don't replicate that data and be constantly checking on it and bringing it back and forth, we're going to end up with two systems that are not in sync. So what we advocate is for prefill data that you use values that don't change on records that don't get deleted, and then you don't get in that trap because once you have a record whose ID is one two three four five and you have unique IDs, it's always going to be one two three four five. So even if you change it from one product to the other, you're still um, looking at one two three four five. And then the other thing that we're looking for is governance. Within some of our products, we have the ability to have parent-child relationships. Okay. This parent says, here's the story that we need to fulfill, and these children are all the tasks that, that need to be done. One of the things we like to see that is beyond the single system, we'd like to see it across all systems where what we can do is we can say, if you have a parent-child relationship and you've defined it such that you can't close the parent until you've completed the tasks for the children, then we could implement that. And there are pieces in some parts of our software that do support that, but when you're looking ac across the world in an OSLC linking thing, we're still working on getting that. That's one of the things we're looking to do. 
So at this point, <clears throat> I think this is my last slide before I turn it over to Pete. Um, Sean, are there any questions that uh, people would like to ask? Since I see most people are just listening on the audio cast, if you do have questions, there's a uh, chat there's a chat option. It's uh, on the right-hand side in the participants box, it's the third one. And if you just want to type anything, you can send it to me or to all. And, uh, and then you can ask any questions. I'll just give a minute in case anyone wants mm -hmm. to type anything in, and then we can maybe, uh, as we do that, you can pass control over to okay. Pete. Okay, Pete, you should be all set. Okay, I'm going to start sharing now. So you should be able to see my screen that says Rocker Demo. I can. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name is Pete Steinfeld, and I'm going to talk about this specific system that we're in the process of implementing um, and here in Rational at IBM. And it's a system for dealing with interactions between um, Rational and our customers or our clients. And, and it's a toolkit for systems and, and there's three main players in the system. There's the client and then there's the Rational Support Organization and the support organization takes um, bug requests from bug reports from clients and then there's also development and development takes requests for enhancements and then also support and development collaborate with each other. And we wanted the, we have existing tools for doing this and, and Rocker is a, a new set of tools for doing this. And there's various kinds of client interactions that, that Rocker handles. There's there's reports, you know, when a customer calls in, a, a problem management report is created. And then subsequent to that, if it's determined that that report is actually a bug in the product that needs to be fixed, an APAR is created, an authorized problem analysis report. And then also, if a customer wants to get an enhancement to a product, they submit an RFE. And in addition to those, to these interactions, we also have occasions where a customer's hair is really on fire, and we create a, a crit set to deal with that, you know, in a in a prompt manner. And and so those are the main kinds of interactions that we have with with clients. And then also the support and development organizations and rational collaborate with each other. And, and their main point of collaboration is, is through escalations. You know, there's there's situations where the support organization takes a, a, a report from a client and they can't do sufficient analysis by themselves, and so they escalate to development, and then the, a conversation takes place between support and development. And then also, in addition to this, there are... Um, in response to bug reports and RFEs, the development team will create work items, and some, and frequently the support organization wants to follow along with what's happening with the resolution of these work items, and so um, it's important that the that the support organization has visibility into these work items. And then the last big piece of the system is we have a, a dashboard that provides both support and development with a central point of access to all this stuff. And so all of these capabilities, these are new capabilities that we want to implement, but there's some things about our existing system that we just cannot change. Um, and one of those things is we have this legacy um, database and, and toolkit for dealing with customer interactions called Retain. And, and Retain is a database that's used by all of IBM, and it's something that we just cannot change and it is not, for example, OSLC enabled. And, and similarly, we have a newer system, which is also not OSLC enabled, to handle RFEs. And, um, and then in addition to dealing with RFEs and, and APARs and PMRs, 
We also have a variety of different systems that are used by existing development teams within Rational. Most teams use RTC. Some teams use a ClearQuest-based database called Rattlesea. And then we also have some recent acquisitions from Telelogic, which use the Telelogic work processing system called Change. So this is the environment that, that Rocker, the new system, has to interact with. And again, we wanted to do this in a way that takes advantage of the loose coupling that's enabled by OSLC, you know, and, and this is where it comes in really handy because, in fact, we can't change these systems. We have to rather interact with them. And this next slide graphically shows that environment that we're interacting with. And in the lower left-hand corner, we have retain, and the lower right, we have the RFE community. And on the right, we have a variety of development project areas. Um, one of our sample development teams is a recent acquisition called Green Hat. And so the very first component of the system that we've implemented is a new RTC project area to handle PMRs, APARs, and RFE. And, and we're, we're taking advantage of a bridge that takes PMRs and APARs, and it creates RTC work items from them. And I'm just going to show you what that looks like right now. Oops, wrong screen. And so if we go here, we're now looking at the web user interface for, um, for the RTC PAR database. And we can see, you know, those of you who are familiar with RTC, there's a bunch of standard tabs. There's, there's an overview tab and a links tab and an approvals tab and a history tab over on the far right. And these are all things that people who use RTT are familiar with. But we also have some new tabs that are specific to PMRs, to these customer reported problem reports. So one of them is called PMR information. And I'm going to click on that tab right now. And when I click on that, it brings up a bunch of information that's specific to customer problem reports. I mean, the number of the PMR, the country code that it was reported from, the problem status over here is OP1L2, whatever that is. Um, there's the priority there and the severity of the PMR. So what happens is a customer calls in and um, a rational tech support, person, tech support person takes the call. They fill in the information and retain, and then a bridge runs and it takes that information from retain and it pumps it into this work item here. And then once it's in this work item, it's available for use by all of the facilities of RTC and all of the facilities of OSLC. And I'll get into that in a little bit more. And so the very next thing that we have, I'm going to skip over the RFE stuff, is we have our next tool for um, interacting with customers is an escalations project area. And, and similar to the RTC PAR, this is implemented as an RTC project area. And I'm going to show you that. So here is a sample escalation. And again, this is a, a standard or it's a, it's a customized RTC work item type called an escalation, the type of, of work item is called escalation, and it has an overview tab and a discussion tab. And again, these escalations are designed for interactions between the support organization and the development organization. And the main vehicle for that is, are the fields in the escalation. There, there's a summary of the problem as, under, as understood by the L2 support people. There's the environment that the customer saw. There's um, a due date for when, and there's an action plan for who does what for this. And so this escalation is available for collaboration. And, and you can see there's, um, there's a, the standard product information up here, the name of the product and what it's filed against. And, and there's a discussion tab, and it's this discussion tab where the conversation would take place between um, support and um, and development, and so you can add information into the discussion tab, you know, um, about, and then save that information. Okay, so, so far we 
we haven't really seen too much of, um, of OSLC. We've seen that we have this OSLC enabled application, RTC PAR, and we have another OSLC enabled application, this escalations project area. And so the normal flow is a customer calls in a problem, it gets reported into a record and retain, it gets bridged into that same data, gets bridged into a work item in RTC PAR, and then an escalation gets created. And, and it's this creation of the escalation that's the interesting thing where OSLC comes into play because in addition to what I've shown you so far, we have um, OSLC, we have an OSLC relationship between the RTC PAR database and the escalation database. And let me just show you what capabilities that gives you. And so again, the normal flow would be a customer calls in and and the result of that customer call is this PMR is created. And once the PMR is created, then someone can go to this links tab here, which I haven't showed you yet. I'm going to click on that right now. And they can say, oh, this is a problem where I need help from development. And they can say they're going to create an escalation. So they would add a related um, change request, and they could instead of adding it into RTC PAR, they would add a change request from rational escalation. And I'm going to click on that right now. And when I do that, what's happening now, due to the magic of OSLC, and due to the fact that there's a friendship between RTC PAR and the escalation project areas, so now this dialog is actually reaching out into the escalation project area. And I'm going to type in a string here into this. Um, uh, I'm just going to type in the string test. And as I type, what's happening is that RTC is dynamically, through this OSLC linkage, going out to the escalation project area and running a query for any work item that contains the string TEST. And so um, I'm actually showing, what I'm showing you is in the production project area. So I'm going to, I'm not going to actually make any changes here. So I'm going to cancel out of this. But you could see here in the um, lower left hand corner, sorry, that the linkages to um, several work items have already taken place. And in particular, I want to show you there's a, this linkage to the second one down from the top is um, work item number 1157, and it's titled Escalation Test R. Myers, blah, blah, blah. And so what's happened is in our production system, someone has already made this linkage between this PMR and this escalation. Um, and the, again, this linkage is possible through OSLC. And I'm going to move my, my pointer to hover over this escalation. And when I do, um, what's happening in the background is RTC is reaching out across, you know, I'm, I'm working from the context of the RTC project area, but it's reaching out across to the escalation project area, and it's reading the information in this work item that I'm hovering, whose link I'm hovering over, and it's displaying this information directly in the context of the RTC PAR project area. So it displays it when I hover over it, and the hover disappears when I move my cursor off of it. And so this enables me to work in the context of the PMR while reading the information about the escalation itself. And you can see, you know, as I hover and don't hover, I'm hoping that, that, the, um, that the web conferencing is working, but this is happening very quickly. And in addition to, um, in addition to um, the hover, I can also click on this directly. And when I click on this directly, it'll show you <coughs> the actual work item. And, and this is the, the escalation work item that I was showing you before. So we're now looking at the escalation work item directly that was linked to from the PMR. And if I go to the links tab of the escalation itself, I'm going to click on the links tab here, you can see down here in 
the lower left-hand corner that it has a link to the PMR that we were just looking at. And similarly to the PMR, if I hover over it, it displays the information about the PMR. So if I, so, so here we've seen kind of the two roles of the people. You know, the person who's looking at the PMR will typically be a support person. And the support person might want to have visibility into the escalation, which is a vehicle for collaboration with development. And it's typically going to be a, a member of the development organization who's looking at the escalation. And he has the converse capability, which is he can work in the context of the escalation and see the information related to the PMR. Now, I'd like to revisit something I, I talked about previously, which is the creation of this. And so I talked about how you can do this add related here, which I did, and I can select that I'm going to create an, a related escalation. And, and I showed you how uh, I could select this thing. And here is this escalation that, that we're just looking at. And I'm not going to do this again because I'm in the production system, but if I click on this and I click on OK, it will add that link to this work item, this, this PMR work item type. And at the same time, it will reach across and add the corresponding link back to the PMR in the other project area. And so, this, so by working in a single context, we've now established the relationship in both directions so that both the support team and the development team can take advantage of this stuff. Okay. So I've just demonstrated some of the capabilities that are possible because this OSLC linkage exists between RTC PAR and escalation. And, and again, um, in order to make this happen and in order to do this demo, the following things needed to take place. We needed to have this RTC PAR project area. We need to have the escalations project area. We need to have this OSLC friendship between these project areas. And for me to do the demo, I need to have accounts in both of these things. And, and I, I logged on and did my authentication before doing this demo. And then another thing that we have is in addition to an OSLC friendship between RTC PAR and escalations, we also have an OSLC friendship between this existing development project area and, and all the development project areas and escalations. So I'm going to show you how the kind of capabilities that gives me. And I'm going to go back to my escalation. And now I've decided, I'm looking at this escalation, for example, and now I decide, oh, I not only, th this is in relation to this problem report, and now I need to create, uh, this is actually a bug in a product, and I want to create uh, a bug report against the product. And so, I'm going to go down here, I'm on the links tab again, and I'm going to click on add related change request. And this time, um, I'm going to select this project area called Green Hat. Green Hat is the name of one of Rational's products, and it's the name of a product team, and it's also the name of the RTC project area. And this dialog comes up, and again, this dialog comes up and it's displaying Rational CSPO, Green Hat and Rational Infrastructure program, Strategy Program. And these selections exist because these are the three project areas that the escalation project area has OSLC friendships with. And so it's, it's asking me, which of the project areas that I have friendships with do you want me to choose from? And I'm gonna, I want to file a bug against Green Hat, and so I'm going to select Green Hat. And then in the bottom of this dialog, it gives me two options. I can either link to an existing defect, or I can create a new one. And linking to an existing one is the more uh, interesting uh, use case. So I'm going to select that, which is already selected by default, and I'm going to click OK here. And now when I click OK, RTC is reaching out across this OSLC linkage to the Green Hat project area. And now you can see at the top here, the, the project area that I'm looking at is, is Green Hat. And it's asking me which type of um, 
which type of work item or query I'm going to do. And, and I'm going to be rather, I'm going to try and look around and see if there's an existing defect that has what I want. So I'm going to type in the string TEST again. And when I do that, what's happening in the background is RTC is reaching across this OSLC linkage. And because of the OSLC API and RTC, it has this capability of querying on work items. And so when I type in the string TEST, it's dynamically running a query in the background and showing me all of the work items that have that string TEST either in their name or their description. And I can see here that there is um, a sample work item um, that we're being used for, that we're using for tests. So I'm going to click on that and select that. And now I'm going to click on OK. And when I do that, it adds this linkage, uh, th this link at the bottom here. And now, now um, similarly to the link between the PMR, the, the, the RTC PAR database that holds the PMRs and the escalation, I now have linkage from the escalation not only to, to the uh, PMR, but to this development defect. And just like I had rich cover for the PMR, I can put my cursor over the escalation, which is um, a defect in the, in, it's a work item in the RTC project area used by the Green Hat development team, and I can get that same preview capability. And I can also click on it and see the, the information. And again, what enabled this to happen are, are two things. There's um, the the OSL, all the infrastructure exists, the, the project area for the development team, the project area for escalation, and also the fact that I personally have accounts in both of these things. If I didn't have an account on the Green Hat project area, my authentication would fail and I wouldn't be able to see this information. So again, you know, what, what I've shown you so far is, is the linkage between escalations and the development project areas, and previously I showed you the linkage between um, the PARs for customer reported bug reports and the escalations. And in addition to this infrastructure, uh, you know, we also have friendships between the, the PMR project area, so it's possible to link directly from a development work item to something in the, to a work item in the PAR project area. Um, and it's, it's worked similarly through the links tab that I showed you. And also, we have another project area for handling crit sits. I'm not going to demonstrate that to you now. But it's similar in that you can, there's a special work item type for handling a, a crit sit. Um, CSPO stands for Customer Satisfaction Project Office, and we have a special work item type called a situation to handle crit sits, and we have OSLC linkages between all these project areas. And we also have, in addition to everything I've showed you so far, we have a dashboard that provides access to all of these capabilities. And let me show you that right now. And here um, is the dashboard. And again, this is a standard RTC dashboard, and, and it resides actually in the RTC project area. And this dashboard is organized, the, the dashboard exists for the various stakeholders in the system. And the stakeholders, again, are, the main stakeholders are the development teams and the support teams. And there's several different roles in there. there there's a tab, and, and the, the dashboard is organized in tabs based on roles. The, the one that, that we're looking at right now is the me tab. And, and the me tab has queries that are designed and, and use cases that are designed for the current user, which is Pete Steinfeld right now. And there's a tab for L2, you know, the support team, and this contains special queries and widgets for the support team. Um, and there is a tab for L3. L3 is the, the development team who specializes in dealing with customer interactions. And so, and in addition to those tabs, there's also a tab called Navigation and Help. And Navigation and Help has um, some help things, so it has some instructions here for how to 
create an escalation, and, and I will expand that. And if you expand that, it gives you detailed instructions on how to do what I've just demonstrated to you. And it also has linkages to these various other things. So I can click on this green hat link, and it'll take me to the green hat dashboard, or to the crit sit dashboard, or to these other capabilities. And, and I wanted to demonstrate one more thing. So you can see, for example, on this L2 tab, we have we have these um, we have these widgets called Open PMRs, and I'm going to just show you how those get created. And so here I am on this Me tab. It's a little less busy, so I'm going to click on this Add Widget button. And when I do that, it gives me the the opportunity to add a new widget. And and it asks me here to select a catalog. And, and it's giving me a choice here, which is the current project area. But in fact, because of OSLC linkages, I have linkages to several different project areas here. And, um, and so I'm going to, I happen to know because I've memorized it, that, that, one, that the friend that contains the Green Hat project area is JazzOp20. So I'm going to click on that. And when I do that, it's displaying the set of widgets that are available from the Green Hat project area. And I want to run, I want to create a widget that has some work item stuff. And so I'm going to go down to the work items catalog. And I'm going to select the add widget for this work item statistics widget. So I click on that. And when I do that, it's reaching out to the Green Hat project area to the all of the um, widgets that are available from Green Hat, and it's making those that widget available in the context of this escalation project area. And here it asks me, now I've got this opportunity to select a query, and when I do that, it's asking me to select a query from those queries available from the Green Hat project team. And I'm going to click on the Select Query button. And these queries that are selected are the ones that have been created by the Green Hat project team. And so I'm going to select this query, Plan Items Affected by Defects. I'm going to click on OK. Um, and it asks me to subdivide this by who created it. And so, and it asks, and, it, and I'm going to select a pie chart because I like the look of pie charts better. So I'm going to click on OK. And when I do that, uh-oh, no work items for this query. Rats. <laughs> this isn't a very good demo. But um, when I do that, what's happening in the background is that um, from the context of the escalation project area, I'm reaching out to, the, to this other project area that I have a friendship with. And it's running this query against the Green Hat project team. And it's showing the results of that query. Unfortunately, this doesn't demo very well because this query resulted in in, um, in nothing to to show. Pete, but maybe if you chose another parameter, it might give you a nice visual on that. Well, um, the the problem is that there were no work items found. So, um, so I'm just gonna we're, we're we're getting close to running out of time here. So rather than flail around here, I'm just gonna continue on. But you can see the results of, here's a query that actually showed results. You know, um, Here's a pie chart over here which shows the open PMRs. And again, this, this widget that has the open PMRs is going to a different project area. It's going to the PAR project area and running the query there and showing the results in the context of the escalation project area. And this is possible because of the, well, in the case of the green hat, it would be possible because of the OSLC friendship between the two project areas. And, and I can hover over this, and I can see that there are three work items. And if I click on this, it will reach out to the other project area and show me the results of, and show me which of those work items um, were being um, displayed in that pie chart. So uh, I've talked about the dashboard, and now I'd like to talk a little bit about um, the overall structure of this. And so the stuff that I've just demonstrated, you know, what we had was we had the existing development project areas, and I showed you some of the green hat stuff. We have the escalation project area, which is owned by the support team, and it holds the escalation work item type. 
And it also has this dashboard with navigation, help, and query widgets. We have this RTC PAR project area, which has bridges to the retain database and to the developer works um, database for RFEs. And we have this CSPO or CRITSIS project area. And I've also showed you some of the OSLC linking capabilities. And, and these OSLC linking capa capabilities provide me with that direct navigation so I can go to the links tab and click on a work item in a different project area. It gives me rich hover. It automatically creates the crosslink or the backlink. When I created uh, an escalation from a PMR, inside that escalation, it created the backlink to the PMR in the links tab of the escalation. And it also gives me access to capabilities in the other application. I can create work items in the, in the other application. I can search for work items, and I can execute queries and those other things. So all of those capabilities are provided through OSLC. And also I demonstrated the dashboard, which is a central point of navigation. Um, and it has the um, it has tabs based on roles. It has navigation and help, and it has these various queries. And these queries are executed not only in the context of the the of the project area in which the dashboard exists, but the queries can reach across to other project areas, to the project area for um, PMRs and APARs for the support team and also to the project area that the development teams use. And then this last slide talks about the kind of the, the infrastructure, you know. Um, and so we have these different project areas. There's there's RTC servers that are running to, that run these project areas. We have a single machine that's holding various databases that are required by RTC. We use DB2 here. And we have friendships um, among all these project areas. And then we have uh, servers that run these bridges. And that's, that's a quick high-level summary of all the support that we need. So that's it. You guys have any questions? Pete, thanks for the... Thanks for the demo. So, sure. Yeah, even even though we didn't get to see the uh, work items, uh, the work items displayed there, it uh, I think demonstrated what you guys have done very nicely. Uh, Bob, also thank you for for your presentation and kind of setting the table and uh, telling us about some of the advantages that uh, that uh, you have you've experienced and uh, are continuing to experience and expect to experience because of this work that you've done here today. Does anyone have any questions? Again, you can just type it in to the to the chat box, and uh, we will answer it on the line. While you think about your questions and and uh, maybe try and come up with one, I I would love to. I'll I'll take this chance to let you know that although all the details are not fleshed out yet or fleshed in, they're we are planning another webcast for uh, July 18th. That's a Wednesday at the same time, 11, 11, 11 a.m. Eastern time. And it's going to be discussing what's called the SAP Connector, which allows you to join together SAP Solution Manager and the IBM CLM suite using OSLC. So hopefully that, that webcast will also be of interest to you. I, I saw some of the uh, some of what will be presented that day was actually a session at Innovate that I attended and uh, enjoyed very much. So I look forward to that presentation and hope that you will join us on that day as well. We're seeing no questions at this time. I'm going to just one last time thanks give thanks to Pete and Bob and. Uh, encourage everyone to share the recording that will be made available on the website with your friends and colleagues who are unable to attend. And uh, once again, I invite you to join us. Thanks, everyone.